Well, welcome. Thank you so yes. much for coming to our office. We have Miss Olivia Price, real estate agent extraordinaire, <laughs> and et cetera. So you are a real estate agent oh, here yeah. in Georgia, mm -hmm. and I would love to know, like, what got you into real estate? Okay, that's a good question. So I've been in sales for the past 10 years. Um, initially, my husband was the one who introduced me to sales in general. Mm -hmm. I met him, I was younger. He was like, you should try sales. I don't like sales. I don't know, nothing about sales. I can't sell water too well. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know. But um, I tried it and I rocked out in car sales. Loved it, loved it, loved it. After I had my first daughter, he was like, hey, maybe you should try a different um, career. Maybe something with less hours. Because with the car dealership, I was putting in like 12 hour shifts, like per day. Mm -hmm. So um, with that, I moved into insurance. I sold insurance for State Farm for quite some time. Insurance wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. um, State Farm is a great company, great company. But for me, selling with them was a no-go. I was there for a couple of years and then I got into real estate. Um, real estate for me has been life-changing. It's been a blessing to help other people. Um, but that's really how I got into real estate. It was more of so me being already in sales and this being my final destination with sales. Mm -hmm. that's and like that's so interesting. I think that as we kind of uh, grow in our careers and mm -hmm. find the things that we like to do, mm -hmm. then we start uh, accepting sales more yeah. because really it's like whatever we're doing in life, we have to sell, it's whether true, it's true. getting our kids to do something, mm -hmm. getting them to listen mm -hmm. to us, mm -hmm. uh, getting our spouse on board mm -hmm. with something, mm -hmm. um, or in any job. And mm -hmm. I had, it made me think of, um, I was a personal trainer, um, a, like a hundred years ago. And I was, a re I was a real estate agent too, oh, about a hundred okay. years ago. And, um, with specifically personal training, I loved the training part, but I hated the sales part. Mm -hmm. And I fought that, I, I fought that, but then like, I couldn't have clients and make money without the sales part. And then with real estate, I loved looking at all the houses mm -hmm. and imagining like what I would do mm -hmm. to each of the houses and decorating and designing. So mm -hmm. what is it that you are like most passionate or most enjoy about real estate? It's funny that you say that because the kick for me, um, like you said, it's more so once you're in it, then you start to realize, okay, this is just what it is. It's a part of the game. But for me, I get the joy of knowing that a lot of people that I talk to don't even know that they can buy a home. Mm -hmm. That's my kick. That's mm -hmm. my, my, my kind of... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Your jam. Yeah, <laughs> really, because they're like, I didn't even know I could do this. Yeah. And those are the best people because those are yeah. people that tell other people about me. So who is your ideal client? Like what type of clients do you work with? Is it all types of clients? First time home first -time buyers, home buyers investors. No investors. Mm -hmm. No investors yet. But um solely first time home buyers, people who are um, trying to sell their home. Um that's really it. So I'm just really, um, my niche is residential. Okay. And so you said a lot of times that people don't even realize they can buy a home. Yeah. So is it that they think it's out of their price range or like, what are some misconceptions that you kind of help people navigate through that process? So one thing I can just speak in terms of my experience and, um, the people who predominantly do business with me, just a lot of them are in this renting game. Mm. You know, a lot of them, they do have good income. A lot of them credit score is decent, mm -hmm. you know, but they're just stuck in the matrix when it comes to this renting. You know, a lot of them feel as though, well, you know, I don't have the money, you know, I don't have the extra money, but I'm like, hey, you know, they have down payment assistance. 100% mm -hmm. financing. They have so many different programs out there. If you're a nurse or a firefighter, they have um, um, home time heroes mm -hmm. that um, actually contribute money towards your closing costs. So there's so many different things that a lot of people just don't know. We're not educated enough in that field to know that, hey, you know, if I have good credit, if I have a good income, I can purchase. That's such so, a good point. Mm -hmm. I think that anything that someone is interested mm -hmm. in or wants to be able to do to find an expert in that field, mm -hmm. increase their knowledge mm -hmm. because there's a lot of things that they may not know that are available mm -hmm. to them. That we, we come across that a lot in our financial services agency mm -hmm. is people don't know what is available. Mm -hmm. And uh, life insurance is actually one of the products that we mm -hmm. offer. And that's a huge mi misconception is people think that it costs more mm -hmm. than it actually does mm -hmm. or think that they can't get approved. Mm -hmm. And so it's so important 
sometimes people think, oh, I can figure it out on my own. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can go buy a home on my own. But mm -hmm. you may be missing key mm -hmm. information to getting a better deal, mm -hmm. finding what you're really looking mm -hmm. for, and then just the whole process mm -hmm. of going smoother because you have a professional. Mm -hmm. So and what, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, and I was going to say, I, I would say 80% of my job is counseling. Mm -hmm. It really is because a lot, like you said, a lot of people, they don't know. Mm -hmm. And some people, they have this mix, misconception when they're looking at HGTV, they're looking at all these real estate shows and they're like, oh, one, two, three, we got into our home. And I'm like, no, that's just a, a, a small fragment of the process. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the sleepless nights. If you're not knowing the lender isn't answering your calls, what's going on? I need this document. I already sent that document and this and this and this. So I'm the liaison between all of that. Mm -hmm. So people really, and what I've seen at least with my clients, they, they lean on me for a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's more so like consoling and Hey, it's okay. Let's keep doing it. Let's keep going. So my job is way beyond real estate. Yeah, it really is. Especially when it comes to, to, to um, really getting them through that process because it can be a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you say is like the most challenging part of your business that maybe you didn't realize mm. you would face until yeah. you faced it? Um, it would really just be that process from getting, because that's the biggest thing too. That goes back to what you said, that a lot of people think real estate, showing the houses, imagining this and doing mm -hmm. this, but it's the back end work. Yeah. It's like what I said, the counseling part, the communication part, like 80% of real estate is communication, mm -hmm. it's counseling, it's making sure that you're explaining the process thoroughly so they fully understand. Because a lot of times when you're buying a home, you're just in bliss. Especially mm -hmm. if it's your first time, or even if you have a home, I tell people you're always going to be a first time home buyer. If you own your home for 10 years, you're a first time home buyer because the market 10 years ago is not the market now. Mm -hmm. You're a first time home buyer. Yeah. So just taking people from that step is it's a lot. So I tell people that I think that's the most difficult part is just the communication and calming people down and really right. explaining to them. This is really how it works. What is it like uh, negotiating mm -hmm. with, you know, the other party? Because mm -hmm. there's the sales part yes. of getting your client and representing mm -hmm. your client mm -hmm. and finding what they're looking mm -hmm. for, or if it's a seller, finding a seller. But then there's the negotiation. It's not mm -hmm. just like, okay, let's put mm -hmm. an offer in and close the deal. Mm -hmm. It's like, was that something that you had to like a skill that you had to learn and then what did you do to perfect that good question so that goes back into my previous sales um experience i was in car sales mm -hmm. so i learned the art mm -hmm. of negotiation there you know how it is buying a car <laughs> you'll sit there okay well you might and it's crazy because versus cars and selling real estate now it's kind of sort of night and day but then it's not yeah but cars is just that negotiation is can be for hours right sometimes but i take what i learned from there and i applied it to real estate um yeah. it's really the fact that i'm able to calmly express what my client wants mm -hmm. there's no this there's no that can you do it can you not let's come to terms yeah and i think part of it with perfecting that negotiation is also having my expertise in the other fields that i do mm -hmm. like um i feel as though with negotiating especially during a pandemic mm -hmm. it was crazy now we're becoming uh, now we're coming into a more stabilized market but during the pandemic the negotiation I don't think it was really much negotiation out there. Yeah. It really wasn't. It was more of just a bidding thing. Who can bid more? Yeah. Who, can, who can take off this contingency? Who cannot? Who can waive their appraisal and yeah. X, Y, and Z? So now it's more of so I'm getting back to the, okay, let's, let's really talk about this. Let's really figure this thing out. So really, I think it's just communication once again. Yeah, it was crazy mm -hmm. around that time mm -hmm. because we were looking and I found like the perfect house mm -hmm. And it was a great price, mm -hmm. and but the bidding wars, mm -hmm. you know. And I was told I would have to yep. um, give up the appraisal, mm -hmm. give up the inspection, mm -hmm. and offer more than mm -hmm. the asking price, mm -hmm. and come up with all of that in mm -hmm. cash. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm not willing to do that. And mm -hmm. it sold two weeks later for like a hundred and fifteen thousand over oh, yeah. asking price. Mm -hmm. And it just is insane. So how do you, it seems like there's always something crazy going on mm -hmm. in real estate. It's either like, it's, well, it's either a buyer's market or a seller's market or something crazy is happening, you mm -hmm. know? And so like, how do you navigate 
the ups and downs? That's a good question. Um, that's a really good question because I really don't think there is a way to do that. Mm-hmm. I just think if you have to roll with the punches. You yeah. really do. And I tell people that it's never going to be a perfect time to buy. Mm-hmm. It's never going to be a perfect time to buy. But one thing I can say that's a perfect time for you, mm-hmm. <laughs> depending on your situation and your income and your financial background, what you have going on, it's yeah. really you. But one thing I can say is that, um, especially here in Georgia, I mean, you better hop on something now before. <laughs> no, honestly, they're saying we're the new New York and yeah. the new LA. Yeah. So this is the perfect time to get into something, even with interest rates mm-hmm. and this, and then the um, the banking system being shut down for a little bit or collapsing. That's how people look. At the end of the day, either you're going to rent or you're going to own. Yeah. There's only two things. So if someone's thinking about getting into the market, mm-hmm. looking for a home, what are some suggestions that you have? Mm-hmm. And also, how can they reach out to you mm-hmm. um, for some help? Okay. So um, I am all... I'm on, I wouldn't say all social media platforms, but just about all of them. LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, um, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter. So I have various ways of communication for people to reach out to me as well as phone number. I have a Google business. So you can always just Google Olivia J. Price and I pull up every, um, everything pulls up about me. So um, those are some ways to communicate, I mean, to um, reach out to me. Awesome. They are. And then if somebody is thinking about getting into the real estate market as an agent, mm-hmm. or maybe they have their license and they're looking to partner, mm-hmm. do you take on agents mm-hmm. in your agency? Mm-hmm. And what does that look like? Okay. So um, I am with Keller Williams Realty Atlanta Partners. That's my brokerage, but I do have my own real estate team and we are growing it. Um, right now, I do have a couple of trainees who are in the midst of taking their real estate exam who um, who will come underneath me. So if anyone is interested and wanting to explore more options of how to build their real estate business, please reach out to me um, as well because um, I tell people, even if you don't do real estate full time it's just a license that you should want to have because you never know when you have a family member who may need your assistance or a friend who may need your assistance or whoever you want to be able to give them that because real estate everything's real estate Mm-hmm. Everything you're going to have to inquire about real estate at some point in your life. People always need a place to live. Surely do. And we <laughs> always need a place to live. So yeah. I tell people, why not be that expert for them? Too? Right. Wow. And I also believe in having other streams of revenue, too. Mm-hmm. So if you do already have a job. It's always good to have a second stream of revenue coming in that kind of just happens. Yeah. You know, because awesome. I, I believe that everyone does have at least five deals in their pipeline, realtor or not. Mm-hmm. You're going to have someone that comes and say, hey, I'm looking for a place to stay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So being a mom, Mm -hmm. and we talked about this a little bit, like before we started here, and I said, you know, we can talk about like how to balance, Mm -hmm. and I put it in quotes, because as you said, it's it's never really a balance, Mm -hmm. you know, it seems like, and this is actually what led me to being a mom actually is what led me to the financial industry, because Mm -hmm. I felt like I was a single mom for seven Mm -hmm. years before I met my husband. And I felt like I was either, uh, I, I wanted to have financial and family success, mm-hmm. both. And I felt like I had to pick. Yeah. I was either making mm-hmm. money and not spending any, yep. any time with my son, mm-hmm. or I was spending time with my son, son and I was broke. Uh-huh. And I, was, I couldn't figure out how to have both. Mm-hmm. And so that led me on a journey because I didn't want to pass that same thing on to my son. I wanted him to be successful. And I'm like, well, I got to learn the tools so I could teach him. Mm -hmm. And so it purely started out of a desire to teach him a better Mm -hmm. way. And then I realized along the way, some things to put into place. Mm -hmm. Um, But how do you, what are some successful actions that you have Mm -hmm. to kind of keep in that balance, so Mm -hmm. to speak, between family and and financial success, your career? And that's a good question, um, a fabulous question, because I think a lot of, especially women, we mm-hmm. deal with that. First of all, we deal with the attachment of our baby. Mm-hmm. You know, that's our baby, it came from us, we birthed it. And then it's the um, the confliction of, dang, but I need to make some money mm-hmm. too. You to know? take care of this baby. <laughs> For real, honestly, it's, it's, it's real. So one of the things that I've done is really, well, I wouldn't say have done, it just maybe just to set up a family. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I couldn't have done it without my family. I couldn't have done it without my husband. He's mm-hmm. home with the kids now. Mm-hmm. You know, but luckily he has an at-home business. Yeah. You know, our, um, he has a barbershop. Um, so we sit on like 
three acres of land. Mm -hmm. So part of our, our land is dedicated to him and then the other is where we actually reside. So just having that balance of mm -hmm. just having a spouse yeah, I mean that support is real because I want to be able to come here. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to run to go show this house or run to this meeting, run to that meeting, go to this side of town or whatnot without having him. Yeah, so he's really an asset to my business. It's just or in the sense of you don't have a spouse. I mean, some type of family to be able to take on that position when you're not there. Mm -hmm. Like when I was selling cars, um, I had my baby. She was young. She was like three months, four months old, mm -hmm. and I was breastfeeding. It was a lot. So um, I missed her first steps, but it was a blessing because we were able to get our house during mm -hmm. that time, you know? So I tell people, you have to do what you have to do sometimes, yeah. you know? But if your child is younger, it's easier to maneuver than versus them being older. Right. Because yeah. now you really can spend that time when they're older, you right. know, versus being younger. So for me, I put... Like you said, that balance is, is no such thing. I put my career first. And by me putting my career first, I'm able to give back to my kids. Now, I, I don't work a nine to five. I work mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur. I work on my own hours. And now I'm able to take my kids to Florida for a weekend and come back and get to work. Or while I'm in Florida, I can still work and do my business. Mm -hmm. So I, by working hard in the beginning, I'm able to do what I want to do at the end, yeah. which I'm still in the building process too. But now I am officially entrepreneur. It's just, it was worth the, I mean, it was worth the, um, the, um, the sacrifice. Yeah. It was worth it. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And I would add to one of the things that I started doing as a single mom before I met my husband, because it does, it, it, it does absolutely mm -hmm. make a difference. And it was really, really hard, you know, as a single mom. But one of the things that I started doing is, um, for one, I started getting around the right environment and the right people mm -hmm. who I had other single moms who we would like pull together and we would help each other or mm -hmm. friends or family members. I didn't have family members close at the time. So just finding the right people, mm -hmm. you know, who have the right mindset and are going after mm -hmm. the right, the right things. And that's actually what led me to meeting my husband, Martin. Mm -hmm. And I had, at the time I was like, uh, I don't need a man. Oh, I, yeah. you know, I can be mom and dad mm -hmm. and I can handle all this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had all the bad relationships. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I kind of wasn't even really open to a relationship, but what I realized is I did want same thing that led me to the financial industry. I wanted to create the mm -hmm. happy, successful environment for my son. So I was like, okay, well, if I did have a relationship, what kind of person would I want? Mm -hmm. So then I started thinking about what is that person? What are the qualities they, that they have? Oh crap. I have to become the person mm -hmm. that would attract that kind of person. Mm -hmm. So then working on myself and getting around mm -hmm. the right people and in the right environments. Mm -hmm. And then that's what led me to mm -hmm. meeting Martin. And then now we combined our business mm -hmm. and have a whole family mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, a life together. So, um, so it, it definitely can happen when you put yourself in the right mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. Um, so, now you're not just doing real estate, mm -mm. you have other things going mm -hmm. on too. Mm -hmm. And the event that we're participating with mm -hmm. you this weekend is called Sip, Paint and Learn, yes. which is so cool. Yes. So tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. what the event is mm -hmm. and also how you came up with it. Like That's why you created good question. it. And I swear every time someone asks, it's like, how did you come up with it? And what is it? It just makes my heart just smiles because I came up with it. Because um, first and foremost, not only am I a top producing uh, real estate agent, I'm top 5%. Um, I believe in volunteer work. I believe. First that, of all, congratulations. Yes, awesome. thank you so much. I just got the results in from my office for the That's first quarter. Awesome. So that was a blessing, um, really, because I have, I have my hands are full. So um, for me to still be able to take care of my clients and make sure they're good to go in their process on top of doing what I need to do personally um, and financially, it's a blessing to be able to uh, manage both. But um, in terms of the event, so prior to starting the event, um, like I said, I believe in volunteer work. So I did a lot of stuff within my city. Um, I'm in the city of Loganville. So last year I served on the city of Loganville Development Authority. Um, and that right there just opened up my eyes to the world of, of um, development. 
Um, I've seen how um, they're in the process of starting to bring more businesses out to Loganville and how they're going to structure our downtown and um, different little things that they're trying to implement to get to that big downtown that you see in certain cities like Swanee and mm-hmm. Lawrenceville and Snowville. So that experience was awesome. And then on top of that, I did a lot of things within my real estate uh, industry, too. Like last year, I served as a board director for the Northeast Atlanta Metro Association of Realtors. And also this year, I served as um, first vice president for the Women's Council of Realtors of Gwinnett. So being in those different industries and sitting on those boards and then also having experience in other sales um, industries, I wanted to accumulate everything that I learned and give it to the public. Because for me, I feel as though a lot of people in our community, we're not knowledgeable in wealth building. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, I feel as though right now, especially after the pandemic, we don't have a safe haven for a place where we can have fun, drink, eat, and also learn something. Mm-hmm. So I want to give them the major trifactor that, hey, you can drink, you can have a good time, but also you can leave as a better person. Mm-hmm. So I wanted, so really this is just my oath to my community, letting them know that, hey, this is gonna be a safe haven for knowledge. You're gonna come here, you're gonna learn something, you're gonna have a good time, and also you're gonna enjoy an activity too. So that's really what I just wanted to do, just my way to give back to my community by education. I love so that's it. the biggest thing is education. So people can come in person yep. and they can also join virtually, right? Mm, yes. No. Well, no, okay. not virtually, okay. but um, the way that we are going to be doing it afterwards, you will be able to see the show afterwards, Okay. but not so much in, in real time. So mm-hmm. for people in Georgia, mm-hmm. how can they um, participate? And mm-hmm. then for people who aren't in, jo- in Georgia, how can they get the information to participate after? Perfect. So in terms of how people can get in contact with us that's in Georgia, you can go to our social media page at Sip, Paint, and Learn Atlanta, and um, you'll be able to see... Um, uh, all the different dates that we have in different locations, as well as the location that we're doing for this Sunday. For people outside of Georgia, I told them that you can still follow us on social media too. Um, you'll be able to either uh, watch the show afterwards, or if you can, if you do want to stop by Georgia, definitely come by. But it's something that you'll just have to watch. And I'm really excited to be a part of it because mm-hmm. one of our goals in our financial services business is to make learning about money fun and easy. Mm-hmm. So like when a lot of people think about learning about money or dealing with money or talking to a financial advisor, mm-hmm. they don't think of like fun and exciting. Mm-mm. They think of confusing, boring, mm-hmm. stressful, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I love this pairing because, mm-hmm. um, well, I was going to say Martin is going to be speaking, but we'll both be yes. speaking. Yes. And we'll be talking about some financial topics, mm-hmm. um, especially like couples and making financial decisions mm-hmm. together, which is huge. It's mm-hmm. one of the top reasons for divorce. Mm-hmm. And it's so um, it, it's such an important thing mm-hmm. to be able to get on the same page mm-hmm. so that you can really be an asset to each other mm-hmm. and reach your goals faster. Together. Yeah. Yes. And yes. so and then the fact that, you know, you can have some drinks yes. and you can paint and yes. have some fun. Yes. I just love combining that because it really just um, it really just combines mm-hmm. what we stand for mm-hmm. is increasing your knowledge and mm-hmm. having fun doing it. Mm-hmm. So I'm really excited. Thank you for the biggest thing. And just to piggyback on that, yeah. just one second, because I feel as though we're all children at heart. That's one of the ways that children learn. What do they do? Kindergarten, first grade, second grade, they make whatever they're learning interactive. Mm-hmm. So that's really what we're doing now. And I love the fact that you are very excited about that because I do feel as though knowledge and fun is going to stick better too. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So thanks for inviting us yes, to participate. Yes, I'm excited. And thanks so much for coming to the office. Yes. And it's so great getting to know you mm-hmm. and learning about your business. And also, um, you know, Martin and I do a lot of things virtually mm-hmm. um, with our business. And so we're looking at ways that we can get more involved with our community mm-hmm. as well. So I'm really really excited yes. and is there anything else that you'd like to share um before we wrap up how people can reach you or anything that you want to any any final messages 
Well, to be honest with you, I don't have any final messages. I think <laughs> that um, we pretty much covered everything. Um, well, everything I can possibly think of at this time, <laughs> of course. But if you can, follow me on social media at agent.oliviajprice. Um, like I said, I'm an advocate for my community. I'm an advocate within my um, real estate industry. And I'm an advocate just as a mom. Um, so it's a lot of different ways that um, we can help each other. If you do have um, any questions about real estate or ways to get into real estate, definitely reach out to me. Because like I told you, um, everything is real estate. Everything is real estate. So we all have something to learn and to gain. 